For truth and diversity come to Radio Simi. Hey everyone, welcome to Radio Simi. I'm your host, Aliyah Ewing. And I'm your co-host, Adam Fusage. This week we'll be interviewing Aurora Rugerio and Sophie Nguyen. We'll also be going over the latest news and some more Simi Valley updates. Our show has gotten a cumulative 1,500 downloads. We're so grateful for all of our listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in every week. Remember, we're still looking for three people to join our team. So if you're interested, fill out the short Google form at tiny.cc forward slash join Radio Simi. Here's some updates about what's going on in Simi Valley in the greater area. The Kiwanis Club of Simi Valley, in partnership with the Simi Valley Council on Aging, is hosting a free drive through Easter breakfast on Sunday, April 4th from 8 to 11 a.m. The event is at the Simi Valley Senior Center, located at 3900 Avenue to Simi. Seniors are asked to enter through the West parking lot and remain in their vehicles. Everyone will receive a hot prepackaged meal that includes pancakes, eggs, sausage, fruit, and milk to celebrate everyone is asked to wear spring clothing. Fame Festival is having their festival this year virtual. You can watch musicians and artists perform. Their goal is to increase mental health. The event is tomorrow, March 27th at 2 p.m. For more information on how to attend, go to famefestival.com. That's F-A-Y-M festival.com. Speaking of performing, the Simi Valley Youth Council is partnering with the Cultural Arts Center to create a virtual talent show of every kind of act you can think of. Performers have a chance of winning cash prizes, or they can participate in a non-competitive showcase. This event is on May 28th, and they'll film your performance on stage with professional lighting and sound for you. You can sign up to audition at simivalley.org slash talent show. If you're interested in becoming a better writer, you can attend the Public Library's Virtual Writing Workshop. They give helpful tips such as how to overcome writer's block. For more information, check out their website, simivalleylibrary.org. They also have a book club, homework help, and virtual story time. Last year, Simi City Council agreed on a safe park pilot program. This program intends to provide a safe location for the unhoused to sleep in their cars during the winter. The first attempt on the program was two days before Christmas last year. It was in the parking lot in the United Methodist Church of Simi Valley. The Samaritan Center is the one managing the program. Since its creation, only two unhoused people have used the Safe Park Pilot Program. The program is going to end on March 31st this year, and at the most recent City Council meeting, City Council authorized the City Manager to reinstate the program as needed. The Simi Valley City Council is accepting nominations for the 2021 Community Volunteer of the Year for Extraordinary Service to the Community. Eligible nominees must be Simi Valley residents who have contributed volunteer service within Simi Valley over the past year. The deadline is April 2nd. You can nominate someone on the city's website, including yourself. If any seniors are interested in a book club, you can attend the Women's Book Club that is meeting Friday, April 16th from 2 to 4 p.m. You can call 805-583-6363 for the location. In this case, seniors means our elders, not people graduating in two months. Here's what's going on in local business. The city of Simi Valley has loan funds available with no monthly payments to assist low-income homeowners with home repairs and energy efficiency improvements. Visit the city website at www.simivalley.org forward slash home rehab for more information. Businesses hiring employees should register for the 33rd Annual Youth Employment Service Virtual Job and Career Expo. It will start April 24th and end April 30th. This is a great opportunity for local employers to advertise themselves to our community. The public housing waiting list applications open on April 6th and close on April 19th at 4 p.m. To apply, go to online portal dot A-H-A-C-V dot org. The AHA stands for Area Housing Authority, and this program is for low-income households of people who work or live in Simi, Camarillo, Fillmore, Moore Park, Ojai, Thousand Oaks, and unincorporated areas of Ventura County. Unincorporated areas means that the area is not legally considered part of the city, but is still under Ventura County's jurisdiction. 
For example, the Knolls in Simi Valley is considered unincorporated, and if you had to call the police for whatever reason, the Ventura County Sheriff Department would show up rather than the Simi Valley Police Department. If you were a person with a disability, you can contact 805-480-9991, extension number 670, for accommodations. The new grant program, called the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, will provide $25 billion in relief funds for small restaurants. You can find more info at bit.ly forward slash RRFSV21. Here are your COVID-19 updates. As of Thursday, March 25, 2021, there are 81 new cases and five additional deaths in Ventura County. 79% of our ventilators are available and 24% of our adult ICU beds are available throughout Ventura County. People 50 years and older will be eligible for the vaccine starting on April 1st. And all Californians ages 16 and up will be eligible for the vaccine starting on April 15th. That means y'all will have just enough time to get vaccinated to go to Aaliyah's 19th birthday party. Going to happen in July. For more information on the vaccines, go to covid19.ca.gov for more information. Now, about Party Central, go to radiocini.com. Here's what's going on in local politics. Last episode, we talked about the acronym AAPI, which if you don't remember, stands for Asian American and Pacific Islander. We mentioned three ways you can help our local AAPI community. One of these was to email city council and or our city manager to ask for a resolution supporting the AAPI community and condemning racism and recent hate crimes. I'm proud to say that we got a response from Brian Gabler, our city manager. He emailed me back and said he'll be bringing a resolution to the city council for their involvement. Thank you so much to everybody who sent in emails. Now we just need to keep an eye on them to make sure it actually gets done. This week we'll be interviewing Aurora Rugerio and Sophie Nguyen. They founded a new group in Ventura County called 805 AAPI Solidarity. They'll be having a vigil to honor the AAPI lives lost due to racism and white supremacy in the United States. The vigil is on Saturday, April 3rd at 6 p.m. in Oxnard. Make sure to follow their social media, 805-AAPI-Solidarity, on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you guys so much, Sophie and Aurora, for coming on our show today. Um, would you please introduce yourselves? Yes, so hello everyone. My name is Aurora Rugerio and I am 19 years old. I currently live in Oxnard and I graduated from Pacifica High School and I am attending CSUCI and I am a second year and I am one of the founders of 805 AAPI Solidarity. Hi, good morning. What's poppin'? My name is Sophie Nguyen. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm 19 years old. I live in Oxnard, California. And I'm currently in my last semester as a transfer student at CSU Channel Islands. So I'm graduating this semester. And my major has been sociology and I'm minoring in Chicanic studies. Um, you mentioned 805 AAPI Solidarity. Would you mind explaining um, what that is? Yeah, so 805 AAPI Solidarity is a group that me and Sophie have created, and we just want to create a safe space for all AAPI identities to come together and celebrate their different cultures and their experiences. And we just want to show support. Me and Sophie realized that there wasn't enough um, local groups or AAPI local groups, and we thought that this was the perfect opportunity to get something started and unite all AAPI voices. Yeah, so to add on that, you no, know, this has been a really, with all of the violence and the attacks happening towards our AAPI community, I feel like this has been such a like pivotal and revolutionary moment for the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. Um, and a lot of us, especially, are, like I'm noticing that we didn't have, a lot of us didn't have the courage to speak up and you know, demand more. A lot of times because of our parents' like immigration backgrounds, you know, we were pressured and our parents just wanted to, you know, keep our heads down, like assimilate, not cause more problems in our society, cause more problems in quotations because as in like protest or speak up. But I'm, I really, we really hope to help give courage um, and inspire and empower our local AAPI community, our youth, our parents, our elders, all of us um, to help fight colonialism and racism and feel supported 
and especially in organizing this vigil that's upcoming, this is really a space for healing and a space to um, not just honor those who have lost, but we also want to continue helping us feel empowered in our identities and celebrate our cultures because AAPI cultures are so vast and there's so many countries that are encompassed. So we also wanna celebrate our identities as we're doing the work um, to dismantle white supremacy, dismantle all of these systems that are oppressing, silencing and dismissing us um, because it is enough, um, it's been too long and we want to, um, we want to empower the 805 community. How many people are on the 805 AAPI Solidarity team? It is currently Aurora and I, so to us too. And I want to give a big shout out to Martita Martinez Bravo, the executive director of the Social Justice Fund for Ventura County, who has been an immense support and then connected us with um, 805 Belong, Cindy Liu, um, and other folks in our community who have been so incredible. And so like to our vigil is coming like the uh, Oxnard LGBTQ group, as well as a few others that Aurora can share a little bit about. Um, so we're really excited for all the community support and we couldn't do it without um, the community. Yeah, and um, I basically wanna restate what Sophie said. And I'd like to add that it has been so many groups that have come together to show their support and just give us their advice, especially since we're starting new. And you know we don't really know like, where to go or like how to lead this just because it's a relatively new project and a lot of people like BLM and LGBTQ, Oxnard LGBTQ and uh, We Belong 805, they have all like been so supportive and just giving us advice on where we want to take this group and what we see for the future. <laughs> and I can't be thankful enough for that. So can you tell me a little bit about the vigil and um like when it is, what your goals are, uh, like the time and the place and everything like that? Definitely. So the 805 Candlelight Vigil is going to be Saturday, April 3rd at 6 p.m. in Central Park in River Park, which is in Oxnard. And so this is a time to honor all Asian American and Pacific Islander individuals, lives lost to racial violence, you know, uniting in solidarity against not just AAPI hate and misogyny, but really the overarching system of white supremacy that has been traumatizing our communities and other BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, and communities of color. Um, so this is going to be um, the event schedule for this event is going to have opening remarks. You know, we're going to have some community members, perhaps the district attorney or some Oxford City Council members come out. You know, we'll have a moment of silence. And then the part that I'm personally really excited for and I'm going to cry for sure, um, is the time for our AAPI community members to, you know, speak for two to five minutes, um, whether it be professors, people, our parents, uh, families, youth. So this is a time for us to share whatever we want, um, just a safe space to express ourselves. And we're also having a time for some performers to come out, um, local AAPI performers, musicians. So we'll also have that. And then Aurora, you can share a little bit more. Yeah. And then um, also, I feel it's very important that we mentioned that this is like, again, we mentioned this is a safe space and, you know, racism and, you know, all of that will not be tolerated. We definitely want to welcome all identities and we want to create a safe space for everyone. And again, uh, due to COVID-19, we definitely do require and mandate that people wear masks and social distancing because we definitely do want to make sure that everybody is safe and whether it means emotionally or like physically. And also we definitely don't want any of like footage or anything to come back to the community as something bad. So we definitely want everyone to wear masks and social distance and be responsible about the COVID uh, guidelines and everything. How can allies help the AAPI community right now? I can. I definitely feel that allies can currently just get informed. I feel like learning about white supremacy and how that how white supremacy has really been at the center of most of BIPOC issues and I feel like definitely like learning more about it and learning how to dismantle it is one step towards 
becoming a better ally. And of course, if anybody ever witnesses any form of anti-hate, whether it's to the AAPI community or other BIPOC communities, definitely speak up and learn um, how to stand up and raise your voice against those acts. And I know Sophie, um, we there's an account that is actually offering workshops. I'm not sure if you wanna promote it. Yeah, in lines of what allies can do to support the AAPI community right now, what I did want to share is that, you know, with every form and community doing anti-racist work, I think it's really important that we start within ourselves in like a very, a very deep place almost, I'd like to say, because the self-reflection and the introspection and the self-work you have to do to work towards being anti-racist is often really uncomfortable and it can be painful and it's not fun but we really have to do the work within ourselves so that's making the effort to follow asian american and pacific islander news accounts on social media because oftentimes we're not even on the mainstream news outlets and so you have to be following aapi news organizations like the may lee show um, and Amanda Ngong Wooden. She's another media reporter that's been talking a lot on these issues. So we really want to listen to our AAPI community voices and amplify them. And so aside from you know doing that work to read AAPI authors and listen to the news um, and read what, what other folks are saying, because we have to really listen to the vast, the diversity of AAPI voices right now and also learn about our histories. What I wanted to say is that unfortunately in public school, a lot of us don't have the chance to learn about any communities of color's histories. And so even myself, it's been really painful and sad to learn that, wow, I really didn't ever learn about many Asian American or Pacific Islander leaders in our community. There are so many civil rights leaders that were doing a lot of work with the Black Panthers and the Brown Berets in the 1960s for our civil rights. But we need to learn about those leaders because otherwise our idea of these communities are just so flawed because of the erasure of white supremacy and the dominant white supremacy erasing us and other communities of color from textbooks and everything that we learn about. So we really have to do that work because the system isn't allowing us to learn this in public school. And right now with our, um, we're also in um, ASI student government at CSU Channel Island. So I'm the student government president and Aurora is the director of operations. So we're both in the executive team and we've been doing a lot of work to advocate for ethnic studies courses. So like Asian American Pacific Islander studies, um, black studies, Native American studies. We have a Chicanx studies department, but for, for schools and for educators and people that are in education, I always want to say, even though if it's not existing yet, we need to, within our own classroom, start what, with what's in our power is to acknowledge and teach Asian American Pacific Islander history lives and empower our classmates, our colleagues, our people in our workspaces um, to, to learn and speak against anti-Asian racism and also those AAPI people, whether it's, it's in your workspace or your friend circles, really making sure that we are not only checking in on them, but doing the work ourselves to further our education and our awareness, because if we want to transform our communities, we have to transform ourselves. And that's what takes the hard and, and painful and uncomfortable work. Um, so I wanted to say that. And then for those folks that are in um, education or folks that have any say in like policies and stuff like that, um, we need to be advocating for mental health spaces for AAPI communities and educators and journalists and children to feel and process without the burden of educating people on their trauma and what racism is. Um, and to that, it goes to really ensuring that we even have culturally competent and in, that, in, in those words, having um, therapists and counselors that are AAPI to support our communities because that's really important also. So um, that's a bit of a long answer, but I did wanna share a few of those points because I think it's so important and there's a lot more to dive into, but that's just a brief overview. What does the term AAPI mean to you? So, um, AAPI means Asian American and Pacific Islander. Personally, I'm not a part of the AAPI community. I am born and raised in Mexico. And um, definitely, I 
since I'm not a part of the AAPI community, but of course I, when I hear AAPI, I just think of another, like, like another group that I, you know, show my support with, and no matter what happens, I definitely want to be there and base like empower one another. You know, we've been at the center of, like, we were, we've been affected by white supremacy, and I feel like it is so important that we all stick together, no matter what race and what cultures we have, or, you know, all of that doesn't matter. And I think what AAPI means to me, and I think what being a part of this group and hosting this vigil with Sophie just means um, like unity. I feel like it's very important that all communities get together and, you know, try to put our difference aside and try to stay together and fight against racism just because we like our communities are black indigenous and people of color have been affected by this for far too long and it's I think it's time for us to like stand up against all of this and just raise our voice together. Okay so in response to what does the term AAPI mean to me it's really unique as I've been learning more about this and reflecting upon my own identity really immensely in the light of all of the violence happening. It's been such a heavy time of collective grief and like collective trauma. Um, I've also been learning more about, you know, how did the term, the racialized term Asian American even come to be being that Asians is like 50 plus different countries, ethnicities and cultures. Um, but really it, it really speaks to how when Asian Asians immigrated and folks came to this country they were from the beginning all seen as a monolith. And so when we talk about the term Asian American, it really speaks to the label placed upon us by dominant white culture. They're like, okay, these folks all maybe look the same. These folks um, all came from the same continent. So we're just gonna call them Asian American. Um, and so in that sense, it's almost like a unifying term against that when we come together as the Asian American and also Pacific Islanders who are a whole other culture and group of um, folks. And I'm not Pacific Islander and I never wanna speak on behalf of Pacific Islanders. Um, and I also wanna acknowledge that there has been a lot of racial, sorry, a lot of erasure of our Pacific Islander com um, communities histories um, because sometimes AAPI is lumped together in this situation. We're really wanting to say AAPI because a lot of us have been like tar targeted and from attacks from um, based on us being racialized in a similar way. Um, however, for me, I think when I see AAPI, it really signifies us as Asian in America. It's important that when we learn about ethnic studies to not just, you know, there's different field studies that will just look at like East Asian warrior culture or traditional East Asian thought, but we have to have studies and learn about the history of Asians in America. So that's why the term Asian American is so powerful to me because my identity is so different from someone that's like grown up on the mainland. And you know, as children of immigrants, it's like we do have that unique identity and I think it's becoming its own, its own group because we'll never fully fit in to either side and that's okay. Um, and so when I think of Asian American, I think of also the history of Asians in America, you know, constantly being seen as a foreigner, seen as an infestation. You know, we have been fetishized, especially Asian women, exotified, you know, seen as, oh, um, you look so exotic as a compliment or, um, you know, the fetishization of Asian women, how we're portrayed in the media how we're seen as like overly sexual, docile, submissive, silent, just feeds to dehumanization, which is then feeding to people feeling entitled to our bodies and then our lives, it's leading to actual murder. So when I think of Asian American, I think of all of these things of how we've been seen in white culture, because even though the model minority idea of seeing Asians as the ideal people of color groups, it's not true. It's not true that we're all successful, we all have money. It, it feeds into erasure of the working class Asian American narrative, poor Asians 
American narrative, and it just is a tool of white supremacy that feeds anti-Blackness and pits communities of color against each other. So even the terms like um, the fetishization of Asian women seeing us as like inherently just so much more attractive or people fetishizing our, our features and because we're we're small is like the stereotype where we so so much a certain way it just feeds to the dehumanization even though these things maybe seem like oh they're compliment no it's not if you say i look when you say that we look um exotic is such a good thing you know it just feeds the idea that we're not from here and we're perpetual foreigners so when i think of asian american i also think of our history being seen as um, I don't know if folks are very familiar with the term yellow peril, but that was a term to refer to the, the Chinese immigrants and other Asian immigrants in this country as, as like bringing disease, being like an infestation to this country. And so actually I wanted to share one thing um, is that one Asian American activist, um, Alice, uh, Miss Music with Miss Alice on social media, they posted something that said, that crossed out the word yellow peril and they replaced it with golden power. So to folks who are listening, if you're Asian American, um, I personally have loved that term. You know, we really can reclaim that golden power. Um, we're not your yellow fever. We're not invisible. We're not dangerous. We're not the coronavirus. We're not model minorities. We're not a monolith. We're not the enemy. We're not exotic. Um, and those are all things that were portrayed and put upon us by terms such as the yellow peril. So I wanted to, to share that, that you know, we need to embrace our power, whether you wanna call it your golden power or your power um, as an Asian American or as an Asian Pacific Islander person. Um, so yeah, the, the term AAPI brings up a lot for me because of our history in this country and how um, various microaggressions and things that we've experienced in the past are all stemming from us being in this country and thus being subjected to the to the silencing and stereotypes that are inherently all stemming from white supremacy. So that would be my answer. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. I'm really excited to see more about what 805 AAPI Solidarity is doing. And um, I'm looking forward to how successful I know your vigil is going to be. So thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. We really appreciate this opportunity. And to everyone who's listening, follow us at 805 AAPI Solidarity on Instagram. You can also check out our Facebook page. Um, there's an event a link specifically for the vigil. So click going or interested or share it with your peeps if you're not in the area. We're also going to be streaming it on Facebook most likely. So you can also tune into that and just just follow, share around, and we really appreciate everyone's support because we really need to unite our communities um, by POC unity, Black Indigenous communities of color coming together, um, and also all allies. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Sophie mentioned that allies should put AAPI works in our mainstream feed. One of the ways you can do this locally is through the Simi Valley Public Library. They just recently announced that they have put together a selection of AAPI books. You can find more information on their website, simivalleylibrary.org. Dr. Infinity is a progressive pop band based in Simi Valley. They were formed in 2017 out of musicians from Moorpark College. Dr. Infinity combines elements of rock, jazz, funk, electronic, and experimental music into songs that are as fun as they are varied. This song is their song, Day In, Day Out. This is shop, used to do. Now that's we make it too. Triple X magazine. about it day in day out try getting out more day in day out we're really the night so what can't end quick enough before you even know another day gone
they can't seem to hold my attention. Thank you for that song. You can find their music on Apple, Spotify, and pretty much anywhere else music streams. Also, be sure to visit their YouTube page to watch their lyric video for the song you just heard, Day In, Day Out. Thank you so much for listening to episode 13 of Radio See Me. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Radio See Me. Remember, if you want us to play your song, share your story, or feature your graphic art, reach out to us at tiny.cc slash radiosemiform. If you can, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, we're looking for people to join our team, so if you want to help and get to know your community better, fill out the application of interest at tiny.cc slash joinradiosemi. All of our episodes are on Spotify, Buzzsprout, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and YouTube. And tune in next week.